Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Shenanigans. The party is near to starting. The sun is getting close to going down. What are you going to do? How are you going to get these things ready in time? The eyes and the blankets. All right, so we're going to go... Um, well, first, I'm going to go to the tobacco shop because tobacco was a new thing here. Is the tobacco shop? You you said that like smoking, yeah, like caught on and oh yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. Sure, uh, you can go to General Sherman's store. That's where you can get mm -hmm. tobacco. All right, so I'm just gonna buy some cloves, cigarettes. Uh, tobacco was first. Sorry, tobacco was first introduced in episode 36 of Shenanigans. <laughs> Do you have or candles? What do you got in here? We got tobacco. I got just need some clothes. Clothes? Regular clothes? Just regular clove cigarettes. Clove right. cigarettes, not clothes. Well, yeah, I got some of those. All right. So I'll get a few. I'm looking at them kind of with disgust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then then go a... over to uh -huh. the yard, like standing by out just outside the yard of Wogwarts. <laughs> and I'll light up three of them and I'll hand the other two to these guys. And we'll just say, just look really nonchalant. Okay. <laughs> oh, come on, man. They're close. This is nature. You should be good at this. <laughs> Rather smoke seamlessly, easily. <laughs> All right. You gotta work on that. Soon oh. enough, the children are leaving for the day from uh, from from Walkhorts. Why can I not find? Oh my god! All right. It's not on here. Sure. As, as they're walking by, mm -hmm. I'll say to Fizzy and Rabbers. Yeah, you know, we're there's a lot of work organizing the the party for Desmond's tonight. It's gonna be a rager, but yeah, whatever. You'll be really bitching. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, whatever. Maybe I'll go. Uh little Jimmy and little Bobby approach you. They're they're rookies here at uh Wog Courts and they say a party at Desmond's? Layla invited us to a party. Is that the same one that you're going to? Mm. We're adults. We're, we're in school now. Can 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 I bum um a butt a butt off you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the kid will take it and inhale deeply and make a con check. And uh, <clears throat> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. They hold it in. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to invite somebody, we need them to to do something for us. I mean, they would have to, like, earn their way into the party. Well, we were already invited by Layla. Is that not enough? Oh, I mean, if you want to sit at the kids' table outside. Whatever, we're adults. We're, we're wizarding school now. We're not kids. We don't sit at the kids' table. I mean... I mean, I guess the only thing we really need now. You really think they could? I, I, I mean, you guys probably wouldn't have any magic that could do this. Is like four people who could do some sewing that were like maybe, you know, used to cloth armor and sewing. I got the them. mending spell. I memorized it for class today, but our quiz was canceled. I can mend anything you need, says one of them. This is little Jimmy. Oh, do you. Well, I mean, that's one, but I mean, I guess we need four people. Do you know how much the mending spell can mend? No. I do Neither not. do I. Let's find out. Uh, I was opening the sex book up. Oh, wait, it only works on one object uh, per good level. Thing you have the, good thing you didn't have the quiz today. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> one object per level, and I'm a second level wizard, so I can do two. <laughs> And uh, little Jimmy is like, yeah, I can do two, too. And then they well, giggle over saying I mean, two, too. I mean, I guess if you would like helping, we could let you into the adult party. 
I mean, there's, they're going to be carding, but you know, if you were like working, then they might not card you because they would just assume that you were a worker. Sure, sure, we can get in. We'll do it. We'll we'll mend your shit for you. Well, all right, but I mean, it's got to be quick. It's not shit. It's blankets. We'll, we'll, we'll mend your banners. blankets for you. The, the banners. banners? Are gonna have eyes on them. All right. Well, we can do the blankets or the banners or whatever. But how many are oh. there? Because I can only mend. We can each only mend two. Well, that's four banners. I mean, I guess that could work. Let, let's go. Let's go uh, find out if that'll work. Okay. Let's also... Totally adult business that you know that that is for people that are adults and can work. All right. So you I'll head head over. You head back to blankets and banners. Yes. Uh, run by Tammy Banner. All right. I walk in and go, oh, Tammy, are, are you watching the store until Banner gets back? Hold on. She like dips below the table, switches her bandana and pops back up again. Hello. Welcome to oh, Bannon's Banners and Blankets. Yeah, so uh, you said you needed four Gr totally grown up and able to smoke clothes and drink uh, workers. We don't have four, but we have two that can use magic. Well, that'll be fine. I say, okay. So I, I explain to the kids that, you know, the, that they need to help and then they can come to the party tonight. The adult part of the party where they won't get carted. She, sure, that's yeah, great. I'm not in charge of that, but good to know. Come on, kids, let's put you to work. She slaps her hands together and brings them inside and they look pretty excited. All right, and then we go to Candy's Candies. Oh, is that this place down here? I think this is Candy's Candy. Well, it's the, the only library? unlabeled thing. There's also a library that's missing on. Oh, I think this is actually the library. Well, yeah, you know what would be old. cool is if, if once the Minecraft server got up, a bunch of people could create, uh, like build, build a Berkshire, Berkshire. Mm -hmm. and That'd then we could even like go around Berkshire in, in the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could like wait a year and a half to add the docks in the river, like they wouldn't. Even have to <laughs> It'll be split screen, Minecraft and Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> well, Mecca's got to build a server first, so he's, he's a busy guy. Dude, we'll fly around and then eventually just spawn a bunch of Endermen around us. Mm -hmm. uh... <laughs> Anyways, yes, uh, candies, candies. Candies, candies. Okay. Uh, you find your way to candies, candies, which I'm also going to put on the map. We don't often add these locations to the map, but we're going to do it today. Where should Candy's Candies go? I think it goes across the way from the library next to Paula's Pie Post. Mm -hmm. Candy's Candies. The alliteration. Whoever said bad writing was full of alliteration. Uh, Candy's Candy. This is a place that has come up before, right? You're not just making yeah, this name yeah. up on the no, spot. It, it it's been several episodes. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> at this point, you could pretty much make up a shop and say that it's been here, and I would probably believe you. No, I can check. It's on the wiki. And I can tell you what episodes they appeared in. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we got Candy's Candies now, right next to Paula's Paul Post, uh, Paula's Pie Post and Minnie's Haberdashery. And across from Bannon's Blankets and Banners and Tammy's Tailoring and... <laughs> Uh, Big Ben's Brothel and Paxton's Palace. <laughs> and Connor the Cobbler Crobs Cobbler Shop. <clears throat> oh god, I love these town names. They're perfect. They're perfect. Okay, sorry, right. sorry. I'll throw, a, I'll throw a smoke bomb in and then run in through the door and emerge from the smoke. <laughs> Into the candy place? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Everyone candy. starts coughing and blowing the smoke around. Uh, what? What is it? What is it? What's happened? Candy. 
We need candy by the canful. Can you do it? Can I? Well, if I couldn't, my name wouldn't uh, be can Candy. Can I? Can D. Can we? Can we can get D. candy? Not can D. We, we can. can. This is going to disbalance the the taste of the potatoes. We can't do this. We need candy and potatoes. Nonsense. We'll make candied potatoes. Can you make them yes. in small, individually wrapped little? I can morsel? put them in cans. Well, you actually, canned, we, don't need candy, can, can, we don't need can, them in cans. We just need them in an amount as if, like, many cans worth. They, they, we need many small candies, a good variety, that could fall from a cobalt corpse when it's beaten until it bursts. Oh, you want to stuff kobolds with candy? Yes. Yes. Oh, what you need is candy's cannery. That's how we get all the candy into a can the size of a kobold. And it's doable only if you have a can-do attitude. And I can <laughs> candidly tell you, we have a can-do attitude. <laughs> Give me, bring me Fantastic. a kobold corpse. Bring me a kobold corpse and I'll... I'll do it. I'll set it up. But it's also going to be expensive. This sort of work <laughs> isn't cheap. Yeah. It's 50 gold yeah. and I'll have it for you in a week. How we much for tonight? tonight. And Tonight. if you were to accomplish this, it's for Desmond's party, then when you come and string up the kobolds, it would be okay if you stayed. <sighs> I hear everybody who's anybody is going to be there. Come with me, she says, and she takes you into the back black and licorice do. room. It's <laughs> a dark colors, dark lights, she closes the curtain, which is made up of like black licorice lines all, you know, come together. It's more of like a beaded curtain. And she uh, leans in close and says, the problem you see, in order to get a kobold body ready for the candy and for the candy to burst out in the appropriate way in this short of time, takes dark magic. Oh, I'm out, bye. Some no, no, don't dark. go, don't go. You don't have to do the dark magic. I'm I can do it. I'm sort of leave. can trip? No, no. It's going to take something deeper and darker. I need a young sacrifice. And only then can the kobold corpse be prepared in time. Sacrifice? Yes. What? A young boy is needed with limited spellcasting powers. If we want the kobold corpse to react appropriately and spew candy out in the right directions at the right time. I tell you this because I trust you deeply and I know you would never betray my secret powers. You could think I, I quit as sheriff a few minutes ago then. <laughs> oh, that's very good couldn't tell a sheriff about this. Anyway, if you want this ready in time, I will need a volunteer. Not necessarily willing volunteer. Young, male, some magical powers. Hopefully innocent without really knowing anything about what's going on and e eager to please. <clears throat> Let's just see. say perhaps can do Orphans? Yeah, orphan and sure, orphan, non orphan, whatever. I mean, so yeah. no There's an orphanage next to the them. temple. There's an orphanage right next door to the temple. Well, well, again, we need people with at least a little magical power to make this happen. Mm. If you want it to be done, a nice. young boy with some spell casting abilities that would be easy to persuade to coming into a candy shop. I think I know just the one. No, we can't do this. Yeah, Why not? Yeah. What's wrong with this? It's the way of nature. Things die so other things may exist. It's the natural way. You don't think I got these powers through unnatural means, do you? 
No. Good. Then we're all good, right? Yes. Excellent. Right. Everything oh, comes with a price. price. Everything comes with a price. I'll lean over to them and say, I know just the one. <laughs> okay. Who is he? Timmy or Bobby? Follow me. I'll lead you to him. <laughs> He'll step out. Follow okay. him. Okay. You guys can step outside and. Uh, <clears throat> Trust me, he's totally unimportant, and his death will have no lasting impact on anything. What? One of my characters? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we so I, I lead them to Wadhorts, and then about one block over, I find like the tract home there. I peek in the back window to see if the family is home. They're home and settling down for supper. Hmm. All of them together. We'll need to distract them somehow. Can, uh... I'll go kick in the front door. All right, I'll sneak in the back way here. All right, wait for my cue. See if you see if you can get them, get them uh, out to the front lawn or something, so that I can have a little more time. I'll get wait, in the front. You're lawn. you're homeless, right? I am homeless. I mean, as long as we're being totally. Totally <laughs> twisted, distorted. I imagine you know a few other homeless people. Oh, I know so many. Perhaps, perhaps you, you could bait some to fight out in the front lawn. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll be right back. <laughs> God. I think the game's gathered up around perhaps here. Perhaps you could record it, and then we could stream it somehow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What? So you're not going to go get little Jimmy and little Bobby from Bannon's blankets no, and banners. You're going to find better. new children. <laughs> okay, new yeah. spellcasting children. All right, we, we're here. We're ready. I got I got something better, Neil. All right. Well, the rain has stopped. It's a beautiful day out in Berkshire. The skies are clearing, although the sun is going down. There's like uh, the beginnings of a beautiful sunset, but we're not quite there yet. When the old man gets a bunch of his bums together to have a bum fight in the front yard of these poor people. I, I swayed them with food from the party. They can go to the party. Right, right. If they, they, they fight in the front yard, they can attend the party. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, cool. All right. <clears throat> Does the family go out to watch? So I uh, I lead I lead my squad out to the front yard <laughs> and I call out <laughs> Come on, fight you losers! <laughs> I'll take rock and throw it to that window. Alright. The rock hits the window, the family comes, like gets up from their table and looks out. <laughs> and I'm gonna draw my long my short sword and go to the front door and kick it in. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly sneak in the back of the house. <laughs> the family <laughs> screams. Ah! What are you doing? And then I run over to the uh, the cupboard under the stairs. <laughs> and I and I, I I knock on the cupboard. <laughs> Go away! <laughs> Meanwhile, in the front yard, the mother and father. What are you doing? What's going on? I, I throw open the uh, the cupboard door to find the the hairy the 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 hairy young child. Inside. Yes, the the young child who was bitten by a werewolf once and has now contracted a weird form of lycanthropy <laughs> that like there was a gene mutation and he just gets really hairy when the full moon isn't out and then his hair falls away when it is out and then he gets hairy the rest of the time. It's terrible. It's a terrible and I, condition. And I go, you're a hairy wizard. I am. <laughs> I am. How'd you know? You are. <laughs> and you're going to be educated at Waghorts. Oh, I am. Yes. They won't hate me there for all of my body I'll hair. I'll take you there, but first, to celebrate. <laughs> 
We're gonna go to get you some magic candy. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, at the front door, the father steps in front of the mother and the children and says, You there, put down the sword. I don't know what you want, but we'll give you anything. Just put it down. Leave my children alive. Get him, boys! my sword at him. Roll the hit? Okay. Holy shit, he's just murdering people now. <laughs> 11 hits the father. Roll me damage, d6 damage, plus, I, I don't I'm not sure if that's right, actually. This town I, really does need a sheriff. This, seriously, this town needs law enforcement and five marshals. God, you run the father through on the end of your sword. It sticks out the back of him. He slumps <laughs> to his knees. I turn mother to the, and children, I yell. To the mother and children. <laughs> I look at the rest of the homeless people. What are they doing? <laughs> They've stopped and they're staring at you, mouth agape. I didn't sign up for murder. And they bolt and run. Okay, I bolt and run too. <laughs> with them. Interweave with them. Become, become the hobo. You become the hobo and you run with the naked men after murdering See the father. See you guys party later tonight. <laughs> This was the plan. Uh, Rob, you're in the house with the hairy young boy. Yeah, I'm. I'm sneaking him out the back to take him to the candy shop. All right. <laughs> you kill his did. father, his foster father. You steal the young boy. Have you ever had a chocolate frog? No, my young, parents young don't let me have wizard? anything. No, oh. I've never had a chocolate frog. Well then, we'll just have to to get you, uh, I mean, you'll, you'll need that on your journey to Wogwarts. Get, get, get that, your hair is totally hanging to your eyes. Here, brush that off your forehead. Tries to brush it out of the way, but the other side just hangs oh, that, down that's instead. That's the scar you've got there on your forehead. I know, I hit my head on the staircase when I wake up in the morning and just, it keeps hitting and scarring. <laughs> it it kind of looks like a, a fireball. <laughs> it's a good spell. I always wanted to cast fireball spells. Can I do that now? Will I know how to do it? <laughs> That's what you'll learn at Wogwarts. Eagerly, he goes into the candy shop looking for the candied frog. Where is it? Where is it? Why, you'll just have to go ask Candy. Candy tells him it's in the black licorice room. And the child <laughs> goes with her. Behind the curtains of black licorice, there's a scream, a cry, and a splatter. I'm sure this child was of no importance, and and we won't be regretting the loss of this child. <laughs> yeah, no, no, literally isn't gonna rise up. Any time in the next seven books. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry, he was a whole cross anyway. I mean, Some... Hermione really could have like taken care of everything, if you think about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Some time later, Candy comes out with a kobold pinata stuffed to the brim with candy. Um, well, there we go. That was easy. How much is that? A hundred gold pieces. Here you go. Okay. All right, we're down to 500 of uh, the party fund. All right, party. You've got banners, you've got blankets, you've got a kobold pinata, you've got chicken, you got uh, you got chicken wings, you've got all sorts of different potatoes, and you got sauces for all of it. You've got pillows, uh, a blanket and pillow fort set up. Blanket fort, really. And you've got a hole in the ceiling above the stage cut about a fireman's pole size, minus the pole and minus the fireman. And it has uh, improvised gnomish flamethrowers attached to it. All right. Yeah. There's only two things left to do. I'm definitely going back to the woods. This is just too much corruption. I mean, seriously? Seriously? All right. There's two things left to do. And I'm going to need both of you. Fine. All right. I I pull out a couple of, of decks of cards, you know, for doing magic tricks with. And I hand one deck to um, to Fizzy, mm -hmm. and I say, I need you to write common sentences 
with words missing. All right, all right. Oh my God. And then I hand another deck to, uh, to Rabbers. I say, I need you. I think this is something only you can do. I need you to write the most inappropriate things possible on each of these cards. Uh, uh, what if I, you know, don't know how to write? Do you know how to graffiti? Yeah! It's the same thing. You're just gonna be writing really, really inappropriate, explicit things. Okay. I guess. <laughs> Take the cards. First, I thought you were gonna do Mad Libs, and then I realized what you were going. <laughs> okay. All right. So while they're doing that, I'm gonna I'll go hang all the blankets, but replace the bad ones. So I'm gonna like hang hang them from ropes so that like I could just cut a rope and they'll all the blankets will fall down to the to the floor. Right. So all the blankets are rolled up together and, and attached via some central rope to a, a wall and then if you cut the center rope it'll unfurl all the blankets and they'll fall down all yeah. right you and need to make me to cut it so all the blankets fall away entirely oh so you need two ropes one for the bottom of the blankets and one for the top of the blankets yeah okay so you got two ropes the bottom rope and the top rope got it all right so we'll rig all this up and then i think we're ready for the party okay Okay, here's the card. And I'm gonna get, Wait. Oh, I also need to get um uh since there we, we were gonna have fizzy make flower arrangements. Mm -hmm. Also mm -hmm. wanna have um like a flower a living flower in a pot in a pot. Right. For when it's nice. Uh, There's nice one show. problem as you get into the bar and everything's mm -hmm. looking good and Desmond looks around and goes, Where's the music? Where, where is the music? Yeah, where's we the need music? music for a party. It's the most important part of a party. We, we sent all the bands out of town. We look for loots and lies and they're not in town. What are we meant to do? How I are see. we going to throw a party without music? Well, the battle of the bands will start soon. You can't have a party without a band. Can you have one with two bands? And in walks Mar and Mar Bobbly and the Criers. Followed by Speed Death Metal Cure cover band. And Desmond looks at both of them. <laughs> uh, now, we're going to get a black costume for this one, but we just forgot. Uh, if gotta, you don't like one of them, we can just get rid of them. You can let them both play and then keep the better one. Like Good. a battle of the bands. Oh, this is great. So do we have patrons throw daggers at them? Well, we don't have a sheriff anymore. Don't be silly. That's not what a battle of the bands is. The Give bands me. have to fight. I figure we can use the, the backyard. I mean, you must have a lot of weapons, right? Yeah, yeah, tons of them. Yeah, we'll just have some weapons ready. And then once they've played, we can have them fight to the death. All right. Yeah. This is convinced, like, city life is just so evil that I've just got to go to nature and rise up all the animals to destroy Berkshire <laughs> now. This town needs to be destroyed. Are you? Is this something you're saying to everybody? No, no, internally. I'm just thinking internally. It's internally. Yeah, okay. like, I'm just saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to the wild, get my animal friends, and we're going to destroy this town. You come get back some winos and... in here, just careen through it. But then, of course, it's I'm not evil snack. if it's entertainment. <laughs> no, it's the means to a purpose. <laughs> All right, so let's do it. The party goes off. It begins. The sun goes down. People start coming back from their wild goose chases. And at first, they're kind of pissed because he literally sent them to go catch goose. And it was a wild goose chase. Uh, and then they come back and they realize it's all been a ploy. There's blankets. There's delicious food wafting from inside. There's two bands setting up. And there's a hole in the ceiling. And, and there's no, candy. There's a, no, the no, there's a ceiling looks totally normal. There's a regular yeah. ceiling. Right. 
and there's a kobold strung up upside down that's dead that's dead with with a bat mm. nearby that you can hit it and make candy come out of it <laughs> God, this is really fucking dark guys um and the people oh. settle in and they start drinking and caring well, about well, you and said he had he had goblin pinatas but normally <laughs> but they were like paper mache goblin pinatas like you should have said these, that. These are paper mache. I thought it was obvious. No, these are live kobolds. They're dead kobolds. You said you brought no, them no, back no, for no, this no, purpose. No, they're no, the warrior. You should have said they weren't dead goblins. <laughs> I think when I said goblin pinata, I didn't think I had to specify paper mache goblin pinatas. <laughs> All right. Mm. And, uh, and I'm out in the woods collecting my animal friends to destroy the town. Okay. Yeah, Porvin's bartending. <laughs> uh, Porvin <laughs> is bartending naked, except for his thigh, uh, knee-high leather boots, which get delivered in time. This is horrible. Uh, <laughs> I think we should give. <laughs> and the party goes <laughs> off. Um. Uh. Uh. We're gonna need some sort of check here. We need a couple of checks, I think. Let's start with um, rabbers. What would you say your most significant contribution to the party is? Uh, the dead cold wool pinata. <clears throat> okay, all right. So I need you to make me a wisdom check for like hanging it in the best spot to be battered at and hit at without, you know, you don't want to put it too close to the aisle walking into the kitchen because then people might be bumping into the kitchen or hitting people walking through with a, with bats. You don't want it in the middle of the room because you want people to be able to have like, you want there to be room around the pinata. So show me on the map. Should, Where the should pinata be should be hung. The tree in the in the backyard. Well, it's oh, kind of muddy outside. I guess you could hang it from the tree. But I don't know about hanging a stuffed kobold from a tree and beating it with a stick. But and next some, like, to the tower owned by a kobold. You gotta hang it inside. Yeah, next to the ca- tower owned by a kobold. That's either like threatening the lord of the town. <laughs> <laughs> like it's either intimidation or just something really weird and unethical. Uh, we're gonna hang it right here from the staircase. Oh, okay. Uh, could you mark or ping the spot so I can? Oh uh, yeah. All it right. Just marked it. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. This this mark right there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Excellent. And uh, give me a wisdom check to go with it. Okay. Ooh, all right. Okay. All right. We'll we'll keep going. And uh, fizzy. What Mother's... is your significant contribution to the party? I found Marcus Mistria. I went to the docks and found him. And that's your and... biggest contribution is finding this guy. <laughs> yes. Oh God. And just sticking it through. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, I'm out in the woods now. I don't care about the party. I'm getting my um, wino friends to attack Bergshire now. Sure. Well, I'm also going to need you to make me a wisdom check to All see right. if you put, if your your judgment was right in trusting no. this guy. No. 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 Um, and you were, your judgment wasn't great. All right. And Marcus, Marcus Mysterio. What is your greatest contribution to this party? Why, the performance that I'm about to give. Oh, well, what sort of performance are you going to give? Well, I'm going to throw down, for, like throw down a flash bomb and leap down through through the the trap door in the ceiling to mysteriously appear. After I like pull the rope and make all the blankets fall down, so all the blank like the tops of the blankets fall to the bottom, or the bottom of the blankets like, like so the, the blanket walls just suddenly like I cut the rope <laughs> and they all collapse. The crowd goes I, silent. Like, What's happening? Leap down through the uh, trap door and set it back up and 
there's like flames that are illuminating all the smoke and making it super dramatic. There are flames shooting out of everything. Someone make me a wisdom check for our gnome who has seven wisdom. Someone do it. Uh, seven wisdom to... gnome. Roll it. Seven wisdom gnome? Yeah, d20 plus seven. He doesn't get to roll his, his tinkering skill or anything? No, he gets to make his... Oh my god! <laughs> you know what? It's perfect. The flames come out, but they don't hit anybody or anything. None of the bar catches fire from these flames because the blankets already dropped. So the flamethrowers won't hit them anymore. And the performers are uh, pretty young. So they're a little bit too short to be hit by the flames. I don't know how tall uh, Marcus Mysterio is, but apparently it's not tall enough to be hit by the fire. It goes off without a hitch. And then there's an applause. And there's cheering coming from the audience. All right. Yes. Oh my God, it might actually right, pull step off. out of the smoke, throw off my cloak. I've got my little white elven cat, Sasha, by my side and say, who's ready to get mind fucked? Ooh, 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 me, 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 says Krubarb, right. who is hanging out nearby. <laughs> I'll I'll invoke the magic trumpet to play final countdown. <laughs> it starts playing the final countdown, and everyone starts looking around. What's this music coming from? You're gonna have to queue up final countdown on your own, guys. I can't play it on the stream. Um, and people start looking around, surprised, maybe a little scared. All right, and then I start doing my performance. It'll, it'll involve um, like I can invoke dancing lights, fairy fire. You know, because I'm an elf and I have the elven magic thing, because why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a cleric of the god of magic, so I took three priestly wizard in three different areas. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> including illusion. <laughs> and so I, I do all that. And then I do the, the card tricks. Um, and I have somebody um, like show their card to the, uh, like I'll be totally blindfolded. And I'll, I'll, I'll have somebody get out cards, like not even my cards, just somebody get out cards. Mm -hmm. And then they pick their card and they're supposed to show it to the the, fl the living flower in a flower pot in the middle of the arrangement. Okay. All right, and then they put it, they're supposed to put it back in the deck, and then I pull off the blindfold. I'll say, some magicians don't really do magic. They just have a plant in the audience. <laughs> and I step forward to the very dramatically smoldering all the way to the um, where the, the flower pot is. And I go, I am no exception. <laughs> so tell me your secrets. And I cast speak with plants. <laughs> what is the card? <laughs> Two of clubs. All right, I'll... Oh, if only there was some way I could know. I pace back behind the bar where I'm sure um, there are plenty of weapons stowed by Desmond. Yep. Then I reach under the bar and say, was your card two of clubs? <laughs> <laughs> and there's rabid applause. Everyone's super excited to hear, like, you got the right card. And they all shout and cry. All right, <laughs> give me a performance check, a charisma check to see how well uh, this actually goes off. Cause you did get, you can clearly pull off the trick, but how is your surrounding performance? Speak with plants to make magic, oh my God. I hit a plant. I know, it was so well thought of. Oh my God. <laughs> No. However, oh, while I've you do this, flames, I've got actual magic. 
Well, I think we all know that many people who play the final countdown and proclaim that they're illusionists mess up their their act. What goes wrong? Did you get do you get trapped under the bar for like days at a time? I was going to put Sasha into like like I put Sasha like under, you know, some sort of little curtain. And then reel it away to see <gasps> she's a white tiger. And then have her assist in the act. I mean, come on, I can't get any bonuses at all. Yeah, you can't, but I think your first trap, your your first trick fumbles. Why does your first trick fumble? You'll get multiple tricks, but I just want to... This was, this was a terrible check. You rolled a three, Rob. What, it, right. what goes on? So first trick fumbling. Um, maybe I... Plants can't read cards. Take like a, a hat from somebody in the audience. And I'm gonna pull something out of it, and then like I realize there's like lice all over my hand when I reach in. <laughs> Ooh! All right, but you do the you do the card trick, you do the the cat transforming into a tiger trick, but the hat trick with the lice on it isn't working out. And as you're beginning to pull out your next trick to try and recover from it, all of a sudden there are bears. There are bears at the walls of shenanigans, and there's all sorts of animals from the woods that have come to burn the town down. And the bitchin' party with the Battle of the Bands uh, that has proceeded, it turns out nobody liked Speed Metal Cure. Apparently it's a <laughs> terrible idea. Mar Bobbly and the Criers totally won out on that one. Um, no rules needed. <laughs> the party goes off with all the hitches you know the flames don't burn anything down but the bar gets attacked by wild animals uh the magic That's tricks are sort of plus, working Neil. the bar getting attacked by wild animals is a plus when that happens i'll cry out the bar is being attacked by wild animals if only we had and then Desmond That's cuts you off and goes, everybody, charge! And ev all the fighters, clerics, mages, rogues in the bar <laughs> empty out of the bar through doors and windows and back alleys with weapons drawn and proceed to engage the forest creatures in a brutal combat to the death. What did the homes do? The hobos, <laughs> meanwhile, raid the kitchen. They I'll just... It with them. <laughs> you, you guys can Is raid the, the kitchen. In the kitchen? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's great sauces everywhere. There's a whole bunch of sauce pots and little chickens. Jimmy, little Jimmy, why aren't you out there fighting the bears with the adults? You're an adult, aren't you? No. Okay, yeah, I'm an adult. Little Jimmy goes and picks up a, a meat cleaver, runs out, and instantly gets killed by a bear. Just like one claw across little Jimmy's face and neck, and he hits the ground, bleeding everywhere. Little Jimmy is dead. Second level mages. Less hit points than a tough cat. <laughs> and Desmond's party is bitchin'. It's got everything. Forget, we also have cards against elven kind. <laughs> you have cards against elven kind, which you will play after you slaughter the forest animals that attack the tavern. Oh, I want the animals to win. No, <laughs> no. Shenanigans wins all battles. Um, the animals die miserably and terribly. And afterwards, you play cards against elve elven kind. And, I um, play revenge. You know, the kobold's body gets hit with the uh, things a whole bunch of times, but also someone else gets hit. Like, as the bat goes back, it hits some random client and a fight breaks out. Give me a d20, Matt. That okay. sounds, again, like a bonus to the party. Uh, this is the sort of party that people will talk about for ages. The party is indeed memorable, which makes it indeed bitchin'. A 10 is right in the middle. Uh, it's a long drag out fight that nobody really wins and sort of like ruins the decor in one half of the bar. But then Desmond comes along and like smacks everyone upside the head until he knocks them out and drags them and leaves them in the street. The party <laughs> continues until uh, Marcus Mysterio tries one last trick after like, you know, some really good ones in between. And this last trick involves something dangerous, something really dangerous. Marcus, what do you do? for your last trick. 
something dangerous. Something um, really is, dangerous. Is Fizzy still here, or did he? No, no, away? I'm out. I don't know. No, I'm crying in the woods, vowing revenge. All right. Um, something dangerous. I go now. I will need my assistant, and then I gesture over towards uh, little Bobby and fairy fire him. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna need your help up here. Yeah. Well, I was saying to rappers, but oh, to rappers. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, yeah. not little Bobby. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it could be little Bobby. That's fine too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Desmond, throw all my homeless friends into the street. They're beating the shit out of him. I mean, if it's little Bobby, I guess we could do that. Yeah, it's little Bobby. <laughs> all right. I go, little Bobby. You go to oh. school, don't you? Uh huh. Do you like your teachers? Some of them. Do your teachers like you? Most of them don't. Perhaps they'd like you better if you gave them an apple. Ooh, he goes to grab the apple. Oh, perhaps to show your skill. I mean, a wizard wouldn't carry it in their hands. Perhaps you could stand over there and just carry this on your head. <laughs> sure. He puts the apple on his head and tries to stand walk over there still. balancing. All right, stand very still. Don't let the apple fall. Okay. All right, I'll get out my crossbow. <laughs> Roll the hit. <laughs> I am in no shot? way specialized in the damn crossbow. Is it, is it called shot because it's going to? Uh, I would say pull? an apple has a C fourteen because of its very small size. All right, I have sixteen decks. I forget. Does that give? That's a, a plus one to hit, I believe. All right. Let me double check it, but I think it's a plus one. Yeah. Oh, you don't need crossbow proficiency in two point now. Yeah. I'm, I'm a um, uh, wizard rogue or a, a cleric rogue. Yeah, Excellent. everyone gets crossbow proficiency for free. All right, so plus one to hit, AC 14 is all you need. All right. Means you need a 13. <laughs> yeah, hit little Bobby. Roll me D6 plus one for damage. Oh, God. Little Bobby's only got three HP. It's more than me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just roll 20 to being really slow for me here. <laughs> Shoot little Bobby <laughs> through the back of the neck. He falls down and hits the ground. Desmond looks around at the party and goes, I say, Oh no, little Bobby's dead. Or is he? Oh, I cast your light wings. <laughs> 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 and you know what? We're, We're just gonna leave it here for the day. This is the bitchin' party that gets thrown at shenanigans for no particular reason. And um, it's gonna be the sort of festivities that people talk about for ages because it's a hell of a party. You got epic decorations, you gotta battle the bands, you have a full-fledged, like the entire party draws their weapons and goes and attacks the creatures of the forest that try and take down the bar. And then they come back and drink and accidentally shoot a kid in the back, but it's okay because they heal him afterwards. But we're not really sure if he was dead and got healed. It's kind of, we're not gonna look at that too carefully. And um, you know, the animal attack, it like, like that's something we should have thought of to arrange. <laughs> so that was very fortuitous. Well, I mean, the druid's been talking about doing it for ages. So it worked out. It we all... committed a horrible acts to complete the party. Terrible things were done. Children were sacrificed. Kobolds were slain. It was just some hairy wizard. I'm sure it's not going to have any repercussions in the future. <laughs> Little Bobby died fighting those animals. I mean, really, what would he have done in the future? <laughs> no, yeah, no. Bobby did die fighting those animals. <laughs> it was that was awful. All right, let's dole out some experience. You defeated four kobolds. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. Suicide by cop. Yep, suicide by cop. Uh, you decorated the bar. 
Hold on, four kobolds worth. <laughs> okay. You decorated the bar. Then you improved the bar decorations with better things, and you got little children to do your work for you, so you got free <laughs> child, child labor. labor. Um, you got a kobold pinata, and you went through the process of sacrificing a child in order to do it, so that's worth some experience. You got two bands to fight over these things. That's worth some experience. What else did you do? Um... Oh, you got the boots, the thigh-high leather boots for the naked wizard. He's a great bartender. Got a, and we got a, a skilled bartender out of retirement. Yep, 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 yep. And, um... Uh... Oh, you, oh, you, you killed... killed father, huh? <laughs> yeah, you killed Harry's father. <clears throat> the Harry boy's father. Um, that's, that's worth a little bit of experience. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, you know, who, who hasn't wanted to see the the hairy wizard's father get killed. <laughs> There's no sheriff in town to do anything about it, so it just <laughs> it just gets swept under the table. There's no one to report the time crime to. Um, oh, there's a bum fight in the front yard. That was terrible. <laughs> Nothing about this episode was good or wholesome in any way. We were supposed to throw a party, and it became the worst. Well, MB thing. you know, we did we did rejuvenate uh, Ficey's spirits. You did. That's worth a lot of experience. That was All awesome. right. You did become the sheriff and the fire marshal. <laughs> and um, you know what? You you had a bitchin' party that will be remembered for ages. So let's divide this between three people. Everybody Isn't that more important than two dead children. It certainly is. Everybody take home eight hundred and seventy experience for today's mission. And there's a uh, five hundred gold left over from the pot. I don't have it. So you two can divide it. <laughs> sure, you each get two hundred and fifty gold too. And how much was the uh, the XP again? I'm sorry. Eight seven zero. Eight seven zero. Okay. Yes, sir. Two hundred and sixty three gold in uh, a good old Raver's pocket. Wow. Wow. Successful little venture. Successful Ooh. adventure indeed. Congratulations, party. You have succeeded in today's quest, as ridiculous as it may have been. Um, this has been a lot of fun. I had a great time today with shenanigans. I hope you guys had a good time too. I hope your time is just as good. It's been a while since we've since we've done something this terrible. Um, <laughs> yeah. This and, is uh... Yeah, this is near to par with the uh, tears of a freshly broken heart murdering a puppy of a small child episode. It's great. So is Marcus Mysterio going to use the badges he picked up? I don't know. Ooh, we'll find out. We'll find out <clears throat> next time with more shenanigans. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Good game. Good game. See ya.